Hello everyone and welcome to Pragmac. I wanted to do a Surface Pro comparison. I wanted to look at the two variations of the very popular Microsoft Surface Pro tablet. There is the Surface Pro 7 and Surface Pro X. The Microsoft Surface Pro lineup has been around for many years. We saw the very first Surface Pro tablet make its iconic debut with the kickstand that we all love. That is what makes the Surface Pro so special. It's that kickstand. It was also the first of device that got Microsoft into creating its own tablets and later laptops. The Surface Pro has excelled in the market for many reasons. The primary one is it runs full Windows. In an era of mobile operating systems hampered by limitations, Microsoft delivered with a small device that had access to a full desktop operating system. And for those of you with strong memories, I'm totally washing over Windows RT. Having access to a full desktop operating system with no limitations has has become the defining aspect of the Surface lineup, which differentiates itself on the market, say from an iPad Pro, for example. The Surface Pro 7 is the latest iteration of the Microsoft device, and it is powered by either an Intel Core i3, an i5, or an i7, and that depends on the configuration upon purchase. However, there is an alternative Surface Pro tablet, and that is the Surface Pro X. It's not powered by Intel at all, and that's a shift. Apple might be taking a lot of the spotlight lately. They might be getting a lot of the attention because of their launch of Apple Silicon and using an ARM architecture chip. However, Microsoft has already done it and that device, the Surface Pro X. And that is going to be the main thing to keep in mind today when we look at the specs and pricing for these two devices. The Surface Pro 7 is Intel powered. The Surface Pro X is ARM powered. That's going to become really important later on when deciding if the Surface Pro X is going to run the apps that you need. Unfortunately, there are a number of apps that just will not run on the Surface Pro X. Some that would come to mind is just any application based on an x86 architecture. So you need to keep that in mind. And for the comparison, we're just going to focus today on the original Surface Pro X, which is the SQ1 chip. There's a recently updated Surface Pro X with a faster SQ2 chip. However, it's also much more expensive. To make it a fair comparison, I have picked the SQ1 8GB, 128GB SSD version of the Surface Pro X, and we're going to compare that to Intel Core i5 8GB, 128 28 gigabyte SSD version of the Surface Pro 7. And that is so that we can keep pricing comparative. Getting right into the Surface Pro X, it is powered by that SQ1 chip. The screen is a 13 inch pixel sense display with a resolution of 2880 by 1920 and 267 pixels per inch. It has a 3 2 aspect ratio, a little bit more tall and square than the 16 9 that a lot of people are used to, and it is a touch screen. The Surface Pro X promises 15 hours of typical usage. That is according to Microsoft. On the I.O. or the connection side, it's fairly limited. You have two USB-C's and the Surface Connect port that is used for charging the device. There's also the Surface keyboard port, but that's just so that you can attach the keyboard, which we'll talk about in a moment. And for software, it is running Windows 10 Home. Cameras, it has a Windows Hello face authentication front-facing camera with five megapixels and has a 10 megapixel rear-facing autofocus camera, which is capable of 4K. There are dual mics, two watt stereo speakers, Wi-Fi 5, and Bluetooth 5. Looking at the Surface Pro 7, we have a quad-core i5 powering it. The display is a little bit smaller. It is a 12.3 inch pixel sense display with a resolution of 2736 by 1824 and the exact same pixels per inch, which is 267 PPI. It is a 3-2 aspect ratio, a touchscreen display, and the device promises 10 and a half hours of typical device usage. Connection here, a little bit more variety. You have one USB-C, one USB-A, a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which I'm not sure if you noticed, but the Surface Pro X doesn't have, and the Surface Connect port for charging, as well as the type cover port. In addition, it has a micro SD card reader. Important note there. It also runs 
Dunn's Windows 10 Home. For a camera, it does have the Windows Hello face authentication front facing camera, and that's a five megapixel. It has an eight megapixel rear facing autofocus camera capable of 1080p video, dual mics, and a 1.6 watt stereo speaker system. It comes with Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5. Now I've alluded to this because of the ports, and this is what we call the required accessory on the Surface Pro. Regardless if you're getting a Surface Pro 7 or a Surface Pro X, for the most part and for the majority of users, you're going to have to buy the Surface Type cover because it really does complete the device. It is sold separately, it's an additional cost unfortunately, but it is necessary. They are however both similarly priced, there is only a $10 difference, so it shouldn't be a huge factor if, if it came down to just that. Do keep that in mind when budgeting. Before we go over pricing, let's look at some of the key differences on the Surface Pro 7. You have a smaller 12.3 inch screen, even though it is a bigger, thicker device, versus the edge to edge bezel on the Surface Pro X, which gives you a full 13 inches of display. Ports wise, this is variety versus possible dongle life. And this is again, really up to what type of user you are. The Surface Pro X is smaller and lighter, so it wins on the portability side and on battery longevity side with 50% more battery, at least on paper than the Surface Pro the big selling point for the Surface Pro 7, that's the Core i5. That chipset, it's more versatile, it's more powerful at all around computing. The Surface Pro X might be faster at certain tasks and we'll talk about that in a second. However, for all round general purpose computing, I cannot stress this enough, the one you want is the Surface Pro 7. Pricing wise, when we look at the two Surface Pros and we've spec them out similarly, you have the Surface Pro 7 coming in at $899 and the Surface Surface Pro X coming in at $999. Only a $100 difference between these two. They are very similarly priced. You will have to add in a hundred and something dollars for that keyboard on either. So do remember that. But there is only a $100 decision between the two. Recently, because there was the newer SQ2 Surface Pro X released, you can find this one on sale for $799, making it a $100 cheaper than the Surface Pro 7. Before anybody gets too excited about this, I would like like to urge some caution. And that has to do with who should be considering the Surface Pro X. If you're just doing Netflix, web browsing, email, the Surface Pro X has you covered. It is capable of completing all those tasks. The question you need to ask is, do you play a lot of video games? Do you use Adobe Suite? Are you looking for a true desktop computer? Something with that versatility? That's the Surface Pro 7. To maintain that versatility, to be able to complete all tasks, that's the Surface Pro 7. The Surface Pro X is a very specialized device and those considering it should tread lightly and should do a little bit more research about their app compatibility. However, if you're in that category that doesn't need all that computing, but you do want battery life and you want maximum portability, that Surface Pro X is a great choice. I just wanted to make one more point about the pens. There is a pen accessory for both of these tablets, which I don't think is necessary for either. I think it's a little bit more specific to certain users who are gonna be drawing or taking notes. Do be aware it is sold separately Separately. On the Surface Pro X side, however, the pen, it tucks right into the keyboard case, which is a really cool additional feature. Taking note that there is only a $100 difference up or down, depending on the sales, depending on how you configure these devices, the big question you need to ask, do you need a universal desktop replacement, a computer that can do everything? And if you do, that is a Surface Pro 7. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to my thoughts. Thank you for watching the video. And thank you from Pragmac.